Salutations. Welcome to Strategy and Analysis Centre. Today's briefing, India's aircraft carrier program. Next carrier, INS Vishal. This briefing is about how India gets to three aircraft carriers by around 2035, not counting INS Vikramaditya. Uh, Sea-related briefings for China's aircraft carrier ambitions, the Type 076 assault carrier, and the INS Vikramaditya. And a note on that, uh, some people didn't pick it up while watching the video. This was a, a hypothetical, a what-if um, uh, story. Uh, but if you watch it, it's only five minutes long. It's not very long. You can um, see what I was getting at with that briefing. Now, this is the real INS Vikramaditya. Um, commissioned for a second time in November 2013, uh, previously in service 1987 and 1996, purchased by India in January 2004. Um, so it's not an old ship in terms of its second life, and India has success successfully kept old ships in service for many years. Um, and so may be able to keep the Vikramaditya in service until around 2043, which would be 30 years in its second life. But for this briefing, I will look at the Vikramaditya being taken out of service around 2035, so about 22 years of service life in its second life. Now, this ship, it's very good capability. It's got a lot of real estate, a lot of flight deck area, um, considering what it was converted from. Um, and it's, so it's, India uh, did well with the real estate, the flight deck area, and turning this ship into a, a Stobar carrier from what it was as the um, Admiral Gorshkov. So India could have three aircraft carriers quite quickly. I mean, Vikramaditya, they've got... Um, they're building the Vikrant, which I'll get to in a moment. They could just build another Vikrant and have three aircraft carriers very quickly. But how do you get to three carriers? How does India get three aircraft carriers if you don't count the Vikramaditya? Well, ideally, you don't want three different types of classes. You know, one class of ship, in this case aircraft carriers, would be optimal, but you might have to settle for two. So here we have the INS Vikrant, um, scheduled to be commissioned in about August of this year, 2022. It's a solid design. It's not huge, but it's likely to have an improved air wing if compared to the Vikramaditya. So what about the next carrier, uh, possibly to be named the INS Vishal? And it may, it might be 65,000 tonnes. It might have catapults. It might be nuclear powered. I say might because capability options can change in liberal democracies. For the sake of this briefing, I'm going to use the HMS Queen Elizabeth class um, as a template. So, and here we have a, a photo of the Queen Elizabeth class. Now, I'm not suggesting India is going to revert to Stovall carriers, not at all, but we're going to use the Queen Elizabeth uh, class as a template for um, some of the options that we're going to talk about in a, in a moment. And with these uh, images that uh, will follow, the computer generated images of some of the options I'm going to show are from uh, courtesy of Dave uh, Lummerman at DeviantArt, and I'd uh, recommend you go to that site and check his work. So, possible options and Obviously, we don't know what the capability requirements document has stated in terms of India's aircraft carrier requirements. Um, so it's difficult to know what options can satisfy those unknown capability requirements. Uh, you know, what's the effect to be delivered? You, know, you don't just say, I want an aircraft carrier. You say, what's the effect I want and how do I achieve that effect? So I've selected four possible options, and there certainly could be, could be many more, many more. Option one, uh, conventionally powered Stobar. So essentially, it's just two more of the Vikrant class. Now, possibly slightly modified, um, but essentially two more Vikrants. 
the pros of this option? India can do it now. It has the facilities, it has the workforce, it has the know-how. The cons? Well, the air wing size and competition limitations uh, exist compared to larger vessels. Um, it would have no catapults, no fixed wing, airborne early warning. And in this scenario, if, you, if India did choose option one, this option, you could wait, say, 12 months after Vikrant is commissioned, uh, does it shakedown cruises, make sure everything's fine, and then build the second Vikrant, and then build the third Vikrant to enter service around 2035, as I said in the, uh, earlier. This is the lowest risk and the cheapest option for India to get to three aircraft carriers, not including the Vikramaditya. Option two is again a conventionally powered Stobar design. And here it would be for India to buy the Queen Elizabeth class design. And option two is two Queen Elizabeth class modified with angle flight deck, a full width ski jump because the current uh, Queen Elizabeth has a, has a narrow one launch, if you like, ski jump. Uh, this would be a full width, full width across the bow uh, ski jump uh, and a rest uh, So you have two of those, two of these, plus the existing Vikrant to give you the three. The pros, this is a proven and modern design with modifications, of course. It has a larger air wing than the previous option, but essentially the same aircraft, so that, uh, that saves. Uh, cons, well, no catapults, no fixed wing, airborne early warning. It's low risk, it's uh, more, capable, more capable, but also more expensive than option one. Option three, uh, conventionally powered Catabar carrier. Uh, again, by the Queen Elizabeth class design. Uh, this would consist of two Queen, Queen Elizabeth class modified, angled flight deck as before, arrestor wise as before, but now you have two catapults uh, in uh, replacing the full width ski jump. So two of these plus the Vikrant, the existing Vikrant for your three carriers. Pros, it's a proven and modern design, again with modifications, but the, the hull and the machinery is proven. The same size air wing as option two, but you have more usable deck space uh, because you don't have the ski jump. You do have fixed wing airborne early warning aircraft in with this option. Cons, well, it's not nuclear powered, which we talked about earlier. Uh, so it's moderate risk because there's more uh, modifications to an existing design than option two, uh, and it's also more expensive than option two. And option four, one nuclear powered cattle bar carrier of a new design. New design required here. Now, it may well be based on the French design, but the French design, as I understand it at the moment, is looking at a 75,000 ton vessel rather than something like a 65,000 ton. So it would be a new design. Uh, so one of these plus two Vikrants, existing Vikrant and, and a sister ship, if you like. The pros, well, you have one very capable aircraft carrier in this nuclear powered Catabar carrier. The cons, well, it's the most expensive option. Uh, you'd have very different air wings. For this one carrier, would have very different air wings to the two Vikrants in this option. It's, it's high risk, given it's a new design and nuclear powered. And it's actually not more capable when you look at it over the entire fleet, given the differences between this one ship and your two other ships in this option, which would be the two Vikrants. But um, of these four options, um, be interested to hear your thoughts. So please tell me uh, which option you think would be best for India in the comments. Bearing in mind that um, money is a problem, there are limited finances. So normally I would give an assessment at the end of the briefing. But given the nature of defence procurement in liberal democracies, you know, defence capability requirements and procurement to achieve them can change overnight. You know, just look at Australia with its um, SSKs, its conventional 
powered uh, submarines moving to SSN, nuclear powered submarines, uh, happened uh, in terms of defence procurement overnight. So I won't give an assessment for this briefing. However, and while I don't know what the Indian government's capability requirements are, but given what I know of broader Indian defence considerations uh, from a previous life, um, and including the competing funding requirements of the Indian Army and the Indian Air Force, I would think that option two is the best course of action uh, for India. That concludes uh, today's briefing. Uh, thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers. So uh, please subscribe. Until next time, Vale de Cero.